Hello and welcome back to some more Disco Elysium. Now, last time we got uh, reassured by Kim and regained our uh, morale. Now, let's quickly look at our notebook uh, as uh, to see what we should be doing right now. Right, there was that. Run the number. Yes, we have to wait for that. Um, interview Wild Pines rep. Exactly, interview the union boss. Chain cutters. Yes, yes, the chain cutters. Exactly, that's what we're gonna do now. We've collected those from the car and now it's time to open the makeshift noose. And I hope the body is still here. Yes, it's still here. I don't know what Kuno is doing now, but I'm not gonna talk to that person. They bullied me into submission once. I'm not gonna stand for that. On his side, with his eyes looking straight <clears throat> through you. The belt is still around his neck. His body is supine and open to intrusion by autopsy. All right the then. Adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. Ah, oh, right, I don't have Inland Empire. Um... Yes, let's cut the belt. Cut with as much precision as you can, please. See? My pig is gonna fuck his head up! No, he ain't! Your pig's a boring fuck! Physical instrument? Oh! Oh no, that's gonna be, um... That's gonna be a difficult one. Um, I'm gonna look for a good the spot belt to cut. Is equally tight around the whole circumference of his neck, swelling over the edges like white bread rising from the yeast. Delicious. The knot is the weak spot. The chain cutters fit in there. <clears throat> Steady now, like a flower arranger. Two cuts and it should come loose. And that has increased our odds. That's wonderful. Let's... Yeah, let's give it a shot. After some wonderful. You sink the cutters into the knot tying the belt together. You squeeze the rubber handles together. Sweat forming on your brow. Let's press down on Snap. it then. The knot is slashed. Another cut and the belt falls apart like a flower bouquet, revealing the dead man's neck and the dark red ligature mark around it. The rope rises to a point, leaving a gap in the ligature mark. The suspension point is in the back of the neck. The lieutenant has kneeled closer, running his finger along the dark red gro uh, groove until there's a gap. An origin is observed on the skin, above and below the ligature mark. The mark is well pronounced, consistent with a drop from 1 or 1.5 meters. I'll write Chest that down, thank you. Normal contour. Abdomen is protuberant, pelvis intact, genitalia. Oh boy, Kuno is gonna have something to say about that one. No, let's get out of the sea. I fucking knew it. Genitalia is male and unremarkable, no evidence of injury. I'm gonna write that Back down. Symmetrical and intact. Upper and lower extremities are intact, but asymmetrical. There are combat injuries on the right hand, thigh. And hip. In addition, I see smaller residual scars, too numerous to count, covering about 30% of his skin. From wounds sustained over two, maybe more decades, dispersal and accumulation indicates long and active combat duty. This scarring is extensive, way more than a law officials. Mm -hmm. We have a real museum <clears throat> here. Battles, wars, Last item, hands. He takes uh, the man's right hand in his, inspects it, then moves on to the other hand. Um, I'm gonna pick it the up. The hand feels heavy, filled with decay liquids. Like it's ready to explode if squeezed hard enough. You're suddenly repulsed. So much so, you feel compelled to drop it. Oh no. Hands are clean. No sign of injury from struggling. Alright, uh, 
Were we expecting any? Maybe I'm just not seeing them. Honestly, this stench is making it hard for me to think at the moment. Ooh. That's all for the external. Well done. What next? Internal examination. Central nervous system. I have nothing. Do you have anything on this man's central nervous system? Of course, there is a moral to be drawn from it. A moral to this story. If I may add the moral of this story... What would that be? The dead man looks, too, with barely contained excitement to hear the moral of his story. The brain is very vulnerable to compromises in its blood, pre uh, in its blood supply. I think that may well be the moral of every story, officer. I'll write yeah. N.A. Musculoskeletal. Purge fluid is coming from the mouth. Not injury related. Eyes and tongue protuberant. Hiery bone. Let's see. With his eyes almost closed, the lieutenant puts his hand on the dead man's throat and begins to massage it. Gently, a rotting smell erupts from the mouth. Purge fluid runs down his lips, black and viscous. You hear cracks as the lieutenant moves his sharp fingers inside the flesh, like the creaking of an old house at night. Thank you, Perception. I really needed that one. Jack that fucker off. The hyoid bone is fractured. The rest of the musculoskeletal system is intact. Unremarkable. Respiratory system. Back hunched as if in prayer, he begins to pry open the dead man's jaws. He stops to, ex uh, to exert more force. Both hands are used. Oral cavity shows no lesions. <clears throat> the victim has received a dental implant, possibly after a combat wound. Mouth swollen. Hemorrhaging present in mucosa of the lips and mouth. I'm gonna look inside, why not? No scream. No sigh of relief rises from the darkness inside. It's humid there. Sickly sweet air, unlike anything living. You feel like you're about to throw up again, straight in that mouth of his. Um, I'm going to write it down. I don't think anything is going to come of that. Hepatobiliary, N.A. Why don't we have anything? Uh, are you a hepatobiliary expert? He looks at the corpse's stomach with a mixture of tiredness and disgust. Hepato means liver, and biliary, the gallbladder and bile ducts. Am I an expert in those things? Nothing in your alcohol-soaked memory directs to having forensic expertise on either one. Well, then let's not fool around with it. I don't think so. Neither am I. Well, then let's write N.A. Same for toxicology and serology. N.A. Both? Unless you haven't tapped reservoirs of knowledge there. Reservoirs? No. But do they take obscure trivia and odd tidbits? Um, would obscure tidbits and odd trivia fit the field? Uh, the completionist in me wonders if there's something we could still do. Like a toxicology screening? <clears throat> At this stage, I doubt Processing will find anything, even if he was brimming with cocaine. But still, you should add a request. Write an A and add toxicology request. Cardiovascular. The body exhibits heavy lividity. Blood has gathered in the hands, feet and neck. Hypostasis is visually consistent with the hanging. Gastrointestinal. He breathes a sigh of approaching relief. This is the last field on the list. He looks around to the ground. The pool of feces there. This will do. Digested semi-solid food in stomach. Voila. He touches the corpse's bloated lower abdomen briefly. Uh, I'm gonna omit the voila. Let's What's next on be this? serious here. Um, description of injuries. Let's see. We have bite marks, contusions on the head and chest, and a ligature mark encircling the neck. You'll need three fields. Leave a fourth one too. Okay. Be thorough. 
if you want maximum results. So, um, let's look at bite marks. Head, chest and scalp bite mark injuries. Predation by birds has caused damage to the body. Odontologist does not need to be consulted. And okay. your opinion, officer? Non-fatal post-mortem. Next injury. Contusions. So, the scalp bleeds from a post-mortem head injury, a stone. The injury does not have the rim of an early inflammatory response. A perpetrator on the scene has confessed to causing it post-mortem. At maximum velocity, fucko! Thanks, Kuno. Has confessed to causing it at maximum velocity. I'll write that down. Coagulated blood sticks to his scalp and chest, where the countless stones have hit the dead man. Beneath the description of injury, two boxes. Non-fatal post-mortem. Right. Next. Ligature marks. Oh wait, can I unclick that? Um, what's the fourth injury field for? Just in case we lock ourselves Nothing. out of that. Just in case. Okay, ligature marks. Where the braided ligature mark encircling the neck, with a gap on the nape measuring, let's say, seven centimeters. The hyoid bone is fractured, the cervical column intact. I see hemorrhaging on the skin above and below the ligature mark. Depth of the mark, one centimeter. No signs of clawing on the neck. Below the note, two customary boxes wait to be ticked. The man's head jerks to the side. The ring around his neck is visible. Think for a moment. There's time. Don't rush. I'm going to... S hmm. So, hemorrhaging on the skin above and below. One centimeter, no sign of clawing on the neck. That's weird. That's the strange thing about it. Um... The hyoid bone is fractured. The cervical column is intact. Now, if the cervical column is intact, then he didn't die immediately. Then he, like, suffocated or got the blood flow interrupted. So, usually then he would claw at his throat, potentially. Um, could he be, uh, could he have been dead before they strung him up, uh, strung him up, but I don't think they found anything else. I'm gonna mark it down as fatal. He's gonna call it out if he, if he thinks it's wrong. Let's just see. That's it. We have established cause of death. <clears throat> it's not much and it leaves much to be questioned, but it's a start. All right. Let's wrap this up. I pronounce this field autopsy over. Okay. Um, how did it well, go? We established probable cause of death. Some would say that's the goal of an autopsy. We also requested a toxicological screening. That was thorough. The results should arrive in a couple of weeks, if we are lucky. I will not hold my breath. What else? We were thorough with the list of injuries, too. We described them all in detail. What is there to say? Given the circumstances, it was a professional field autopsy. Um, well, what now? And I'm going to give him back his notebook. Now? Now we put him in a body bag and I drive him to Forborg for processing. The right. lieutenant looks at the dead man one more time, then at his notebook, then at the corpse again. You tilt your head, also looking at the corpse. Hmm. 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 I'm sure we didn't get everything. There's always something. Okay, so 3% chance. Um, search the body one more time thoroughly. Um, Inland Empire, 42% chance. Tell me, who are you, dead man? That one seems to have a lower chance of... of like... Hey, you know what? If we leave now, maybe we can put some. Uh, we can put a point in uh, Inland Empire. Um. Yeah, maybe we can 
Can we do that now? Oh, we can do that now. Let's level that up. And now, um, 58. Now that's odds that I'm more in favor of. Let's try it. I'm gone. Where have you gone? Into the wild pile yonder. And where is that? In the past. Way out in the west. I can see you're gone, but who are you? I'm a joke. Look at me. Um, you are now, but who were you when you were alive? A killer. A motherfucker. And a killer. I have another question for you. Go ahead, Koba. What is happening? What do you mean? I'm talking to you. It's the power of your black frothy liquid starts bubbling on his lips. Imagination. Lovely. Go ahead. Ask me more questions. You fucking love questions. Why do I love questions so much? You're a copperoonie. Look at all of them go. Do you want more questions? Nah, um... Give me a comical amount of questions. Um, sure, yeah, give me Here questions. Here you go, you loony. Um... Is my name Rooney? Fuck no. You're no Rooney. Rooney is obviously not who I am. Me, your name is probably Harry. Could I really be Harry? You can be anything you want, brother Corpo. Why do I feel like I've forgotten something terrible? Because you have. All right, that's. That's enough for now, I'd say. Um, I'm not gonna insult the corpse. That's not gonna lead to anything. Come back later, Corpo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features. If possible, also see me in your dreams. Um, okay, that's... Ominous. Um, that three percent roll, I, I'm just not really believing in it. Um, let's let's bag him. Okay, I need a little help for carrying him to the holding pen of my kinema. I can take care of the rest. Then what? It's too late to take him into processing today. I'll take him first thing tomorrow. He pulls the black uh, the black plas uh, plastic. Okay. One more try. He pulls the black plastic over the dead man's face. Uh, back the corpse and drag it to the motor carriage. <clears throat> All right. So, map. The hanged man. Tommy Lehom, set of tracks. Okay, let's just. Ah, I need to get a copy of the city map. Okay. Um, where's the rest of the armor? Pay for damages. Yeah, that can wait. Um, victims tattoos. Okay, ask about the meanings of tattoos. Sounds like a good thing to do. Let's just see the uh, see where the wind carries us. Can I, for example, ask this person about the tattoos? It's raining again. It was clear just an hour ago. No, I cannot. Like I cannot open the inventory. Okay. It's a shame, but that's okay. In that case, it's probably not gonna lead to anything anyways. Ooh, what What's going on here? 
Goods from the lorry haphazardly litter the surroundings. That path is blocked, okay. Oh, what does that say? An old monument stands in the middle of the traffic island, pointing toward the sea. It looks as if it's being reassembled piece by piece, secured and mounted in the air with the aid of numerous ropes and rods. Who is A this? A silver plaque on the statue's pedestal reads, I am Philip III. The Squanderer, the greatest of the Philippian kings of Rebishol, son of Philip II, the opulent, father of Philip IV, the insane. As you look up, you notice something about the statue. There are some odd indentations on the king's chess piece. Um, oh, that's a good chance. I'm gonna ask that something first. Something with great kinetic energy seems to have impacted the cuirass. Around where the heart is. So Who noted that? Oh. Someone shot him in the heart. Interesting. Uh, Lieutenant, has someone shot the king? Okay. I can't see it, but I take your word for it. What do you think? Well, Martinez is riddled with bullet holes. This place saw a lot of action during the revolution. But the statue is recently renovated, so maybe a joke? target practice or a political statement um i'm gonna say it's a political statement why not what this shows us is guns aren't too uncommon here and people still shoot them sometimes at kings the king stands high above you <clears throat> surveying the bay mute and indifferent to your sightings now, let's think about what the king might have done. Even by the standards of the Philippian kings, old sumptuous Philip was known for his profligacy. Uh, okay, I don't know what that means, but I'm just gonna take your word for it. Well, he blew through the whole national treasury, starting the decline of one of the penultimate century's greatest superpowers, the suzerain of Remishon. Okay, well, that's not His a good thing to do. Maladministration foreshadowed the fall of the monarchy during the anti centennial revolution, an end to his family line and the monarchy on the Insulindian Isola. How did he manage to blow through the entire national treasury? Stories have it that he had his bedroom converted into a treasure chamber where he stored unfathomable wealth. Krugerrands, bars of gold, ornate weaponry, armor, and various chalices. He called it the Sol Auron. It was obscene. There were whispers he slept on a huge pile of gold-dipped feathers, like some obese dragon, instead of a bed, like a normal person. Um, I would like to sleep on gold, hustler style. Uh, the king is the king, and he can do anything. Wait, really? There's no way that's true. A deplorable farce, no wonder th uh, uh, everything went to shit. And yes, that's pretty much the part of it that I agree with. Like, both of those really, like, probably exaggeration a little bit. And still, there's probably some truth to it. So yes, a deplorable farce. But wait, you haven't even heard about his fabled cocaine addiction. The what now? You see, old Philippe wasn't just good at squandering the national treasury on gold and ceremonial weaponry. He was also a prodigious snorter of nose candy. So he was addicted to nose candy, a bloated druggy? Um. That's what the revolutionaries said 150 years later, right before they emptied out the royal mausoleum and dumped His Majesty's mortal remains in the Insulindian Bay. Um, this is a lot His to process. His courtiers said it helped him connect with the higher realms. I mean, I think that is already answered. He's somewhere down the river, but let's just ask anyways. Beneath the cold waters of the Insulindian Bay, 
thrown there by the revolutionaries after they cleaned out the royal mausoleum. And what happened to the statue? The original was blown apart by communards, then further damaged during the landing of the coalition's airships during the turn of the century revolution when Martinez was leveled. Most historians think the coalition's hasty landing may have ultimately saved the statue. If the communards had more time, they would have reduced it up to even finer pieces. And who restored the monument? Some years ago, a group of liberal, artistically inclined individuals, designers mostly, thought it would be ironic to restore the statue of the most wasteful ruler of Rivershell in the poorest part of the city. The statue is supposed to capture the moment it was blown apart, like an instant frozen in time, a rear butterfly trapped in amber, floating on a sea of shit. Well, I can kind of see that, to be honest, yeah. Um, that's... I'm, I'm just going to say that's brilliant, funny and nihilistic. People in Martinez tend to disagree, as do many prominent art critics and thought leaders with more nuanced social awareness than the young ironists. Those critics might have it wrong, though. There's more to it than just ironism. But you can't say what precisely. Perhaps this art mystery will be solved at a later time. You know, I just want to briefly say that while it's definitely a risky st uh, strategy with uh, lives and all that, the, the thinker thing has given me a lot of insight into things and I, I appreciate that. Um, the, I mean, the, what was the other one? Uh, the um, more philosophical one would have been interesting as well, but I'm kind of glad I didn't go with the um, uh, dumbest rocks meat man with this because you know, I've, I've been getting lots of random uh, successes, so I, I think that's pretty nice. Though, yeah, we did die once, so that's, I guess, the downside that comes with it. Philip III, the squanderer, however, with his bronze face up in the air, doesn't seem concerned about what the hoi polloi think of him in death. Not that he ever did in life, either. All right. So, um, skill points. What do we put skill points in? Physique, maybe? What's motorics? Hand eye coordina uh, coordination, perception, reaction speed, uh, savoir faire, interfacing, composure. Hmm. Let's go for suggestion. Hmm. Sure. Why not? A total one? Uh, wait, do I? No, I don't have another one. Okay. All right. So now we have we have all that stuff. Perfect. All right, let's let's keep going then. Um, what else do we have around here? Ruins full of snow. No one lives here anymore. Wait, can you enter? Nope. Nothing to see here. Move right along. What's here? Oh. Sure. Can't hurt. So, is that in close? That's. I mean, conceptualization and suggestion. Wait, minus suggestion, and that's physical instrument. Okay, let's keep that in mind that we can uh, then that we can alter our stats with that a little bit. But I think we'll keep the conceptualization for now. Again, I, I'm not quite sure yet what all that stuff does, but we'll find a way uh, somehow. 
And you are? A small, wrinkled woman does not greet you. She nods along to something on her radio. A photograph is clutched in her hands, and there is a warm smile on her face. The photo, an ambrotype from the turn of the century, as golden as her smile. Um, excuse me, ma'am. I'd like to ask some questions. No response. Wherever this woman is, your words fail to reach her. Well then, snip snap. Hey. Okay. She's just a distracted old woman. Better to leave her alone. Why? why? I just told you why. If you say so, okay. Then uh, let's not talk to her. Ah, auto save. Anything else around here? Oh yeah, you. 